Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And today, for the third part of this week's catch-up videos, we're going to take a bit of a look at uh, what Mike has been doing out with the, uh, these anchor things, and also look at Tristan's new graph systems, and then there's a few sort of miscellaneous bits and pieces here and there to take a glance at as well. So this means that the first chapter will be a little bit spoilery. If you want to skip forward to the uh, Graphitron chapter and, uh, and avoid the spoilers for the endgame puzzle, then that's absolutely fine. Just follow the chapter markings on the YouTube progress bar below, and, and you'll find it easily enough. So, let's get stuck in. The first area that's seen some work is um, out here in Wexovis, or Wexovis Orbit. And Wex so Wexovis is one of the other stars around the around the universe that we're playing with. And so we've set up, or I say we, Mike has set up a system out here that is uh, producing both the power that's being sent over to Melancholia in order to keep that running with the beam, beam emitter. And he's also set up a dimensional anchor over here that is providing useful information to the um, to the Stargate. And the dimension, and all of this stuff between them, they're using a phenomenal amount of power. Like we, we're using, um, well, presumably there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gigawatts being used over here by the whole by the uh, the beam emitter thing and then there's another what is it six gigawatts over here I, I forget exactly how much it is but there's a lot of power being used uh, so we're using in total we're using very nearly 70 gigawatts in, in, in total over here and so well Mike originally came out here and he built the system up but he, he ran out of the Naquium solar panels because well presumably just because we hadn't made enough of them at the time and so because he was producing this sort of this nice pretty pattern thanks to a popular demand he didn't want to just fill in with the with the regular red solar panels which to be fair we were also short of at the time and so we've got the, and so we had some gaps like these ones, and that meant that the uh, the system over here, the anchor wasn't running properly, or the the beam emitter wasn't running properly. We didn't have quite enough power. However, he's been back out here now with a few more panels and filled in enough of the gaps, at least up here, that we now have enough power to run everything at the same time. And maybe he'll come back at another, some point again in the future and, and to finish off the pattern just by filling in all these gaps around here. I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter too much because on the one hand we've got enough power out here, so it's working. But on the other hand, it'd be nice to finish it off and make it complete and remove all this purple from the mini-map up here as well, that'd be quite, that would be quite good. So I think there's a reasonable chance he's going to want to come back out here again just to finish it all off, but for now it is working very, very nicely. Similarly, he's been over to Capellus, and over here he's not tried to do anything pretty, he's just set up the standard layout of uh, one massive block of solar panels like this, so it's, it's a little bit less aesthetic, but it, you know, it, it works quite nicely. And I believe Mark has made a blueprint for this, which makes putting this in quite easy. However, we did run into an interesting problem with this. And if we have a look at the, uh, the Capellus on the Universe Explorer here, you can see that we're getting a solar effectiveness of 1,487%. And that's actually quite low for a sun. If I reduce the priority ometer over here, so we're seeing everything, and then just only show the suns, you can see that there's, yeah, there's a little bit of variation in the amount of power they give off. So we're seeing up here that that one's 1,510, that's possibly the highest can I sort by this? I can. Uh, Capellus is actually the lowest powered sun we know about at only 1487, with uh, Penthus, which we haven't been to, at 15 20. So you can see there's not an enormous difference between them. We're looking at a difference of about 2% between the lowest and the highest. And so it kind of doesn't really matter. It doesn't make that much difference. However, when you're putting out, how many have we got? When you're putting out 5,000 solar panels, then it does start to make a little bit of a difference because they're, they're then the, the extra ones you need, you need an extra 50 when you're going out to a star like this one that's producing the, 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 the bottom end of the amount of range of power. And so I think that's why there's this little area up here where uh, Mike has put in an extra 56 solar panels just to make sure he's got just enough power, and if we look at this, we'll probably find that he is, yeah, there we go, he's almost right up against the amount of power being generated there. So he had actually had to modify the, uh, the blueprint to put in a few extra solar panels because there's slightly less power being produced by the sun. Now, I do feel this is a little bit of a, um, a missed opportunity in, in space exploration, that it would be much more interesting if there was a much wider range of power between the between the suns, so you could have and, and maybe have different types of planets around different energy suns or something like that, and have maybe a two or threefold, maybe even a tenfold difference between the lowest and the highest. As it is, it's they're they're all really really close, but they're not so close that they're exactly the same. So it's, it's almost there is a, there is a slight, a very very slight difference, but not enough of a difference which really make any tactical difference to the way you play the game. So I think it'd be a bit more interesting if maybe this one up here at the top was plus a thousand percent, for example, and then the one right at the bottom was 10,000%, so you get that much, much bigger range. And then you start to think, well, is it worth going to Penthus orbit and trying to do more stuff there, because there's so much more power available, the power suddenly becomes really, really cheap. It's like when you first start playing space exploration, when you get up in, when you first get up into space, you th there's, there's this question of, is it worth building everything in Norvis orbit, because it's cheap and easy to get it there? Or would, it be be would you be better off going and building absolutely everything in Kalidus orbit, because the power is so much easier and so much cheaper? Now, obviously, as you can tell, we've decided that Norvis orbit is, is much better because it's so much easier to get from Norvis to Norbit than it is from Norvis to Kalid Orbit 
because uh, it's, it's a lot it's a lot further you can't do it with just you can't do it with a space elevator so you'd be shipping everything by spaceship over to over to Khalid's orbit or alternatively by rocket earlier on and if you do it by rocket then it takes a lot more fuel and and I suspect that the early in the early stages the rocket fuel that you're using to fill up the rocket is probably more valuable than the resources being used to make the solar panels over here so it's probably better for that reason and also getting to Norvis from most of the other planets is going to be quicker and easier so if you're coming from anywhere outside well, if you're coming from anywhere that's further out from the sun than Norvis, it's going to be a lot quicker to fly in along here and then across there than it is to do um, than it would be to do this sort of extra bit of distance up here to get out to Kalidas orbit. I think oh, I think we made the right decision. I think it is better and easier to build in uh, in Nor in Norbit than it would be to in, in Kalid orbit. And it'd be quite nice if there was a bit more of a tactical decision in choosing which suns to go off to. And maybe even you could have that being you could make it more useful to go to different uh, specific solar systems if you wanted to go off and and, and harvest certain resources. So so we, you may you may decide that it, well okay we need holmium it's maybe there's not very much available in our current star system we should go off to another one like Capellus or Trebellus or Hal Halcyon and you could pick that based on which one of those had the had the best solar availability as well as which one was closest and all all those sort of other things like that so it give you an extra thing to think about of course the flip side of that is that putting down a massive solar field is relatively cheap and relatively easy and so at that point it's where where it's easiest to get the power from is not so much of a consideration because power is basically Basically, just getting lots and lots of power is pretty easy once you've got up to the stage of having these solar panels, having space elevators to pass the power around, and so on. So I don't think it would make that much of a difference unless you had a really, really big difference in the amount of power available in different stars. But it would still be a little bit interesting, at least. It looks like this now brings us up to having six dimensional anchors installed because we've got six suns that are on the uh, on, on the on the list here. Uh, they don't seem to, no, they don't seem to be anymore. So let's have a quick look at Fenestra. Turn it on. See what happens. Stargate boots up, all of the symbols appear around the edge like that, lovely. And then in a moment we'll see the lights will come on down here to tell us how, how things are. And we can see that yes, we have, we have one more anchor that we need. So there's clearly one star out there that has not been uh, prioritised properly, but has an anchor built on it, so that's going to be uh, fun to find. But we need to build one more of those, and then we will have then we'll have the uh, Stargate completely satisfied for uh, anchor points. It'll be, it's already satisfied for temperature. We can program in the um, the target points as well using the using the, these things over here like that where it sets the sets sigil and you can see there we go we've got one light on there it's easy enough to set all the rest of them and so we are nearly at the point where we will be able to start actually trying to turn on the stargate and find out what happens there and that's going to be quite exciting so definitely worth coming back for additionally tristan has been off hunting more pyramids he's been to slithice zelos and zeagle uh, where he's picked up two efficiency modules and a speed module and of course taken screenshots of all of the glyphs out there uh, that means there are now only three pyramids remaining and all of those are in the same systems as very as uh, various ruins and we think it'd be interesting to go off and investigate ruins together as a group because well it, it would be interesting to do it on stream and if Tristan goes there then it won't be on stream because I'm the only streamer so we need to plan some sort of expedition to go out and investigate those at some point probably maybe in the next stream maybe the one after but fairly soon because he's, he's run out of other pyramids to go go looking at and, so, and it's always nice to go off and investigate things and see if we can find any useful treasure the next thing to take a look at is the graph down here. This is our, our resource graph that Tristan built a while back. And as you can see, it shows us a, a list of all of the things that we've got and how healthy our supplies are and which ones we need to worry about. So uh, at the moment, it, things, things over on the left-hand side are looking pretty good. The, these two plates are made on demand, so they don't count. The, the plastic is an overflow rather than an actual resource, so that's fine. Uh, we seem to be a little bit short. Uh, well, not a little bit short. We aren't, we aren't full of glass or green circuits or red circuits, but they're all pretty good. Happy with those. Green belts, we seem to be getting through rather a lot of those but I know I've been doing some big expansions that have been using lots of, particularly the purple belts which are made from green belts and so that's probably why those are a bit low and they're catching up, that, that seems to be alright. Rocket fuel, don't care. Advanced science, we know we're short of those, we've talked about that. Uh, tier 3 and 4 deep space science packs, uh, we, or the catalogues, those aren't actually being logged in the same way. We need to we need to tell it about this in a different way to get to make that look right. The Vulcanite is a bit of a concern. I thought we were okay with that, but we'll need to keep an eye, definitely need to keep an eye on that one. Holmium we know we're short of, Vita extract, fine. Um, interestingly, we seem to have run out of Naquium now, so uh, I think that's down to the power issues over on Talos that I was talking about in the earlier videos, but we know about that. We can we can get that fixed, and the uh, Immer site we're trying to sort out as well. But the part I actually want to show you is up here, where he's added in a new section of graph, uh, which is absolutely enormous, and this tells us how long there has been a problem for. 
So, for example, if we come over here, let's look at, let's look at the Vulcanite for, as an example. Uh, and at the moment, we're seeing a couple of red blobs on there because we've got a bit of a shortage. And then up here, when there is a shortage, these lights will gradually illuminate in turn. And for each one, that means we've been short of that resource for five minutes. And short of means the lights have gone red, whatever we've defined that as down here. And so you can see that we've had it, it, we've had a problem with the Vulcanite for ten minutes. And eventually, um, if we if we have another spaceship come in, then this will this will immediately wipe. Or if we don't have a spaceship come in, it'll gradually get taller and taller and taller. Other resources you can see have been a bit longer. This one's been 10, 20, this one's been half an hour of problem. This one's been 35 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes and so on. So each, each light is 5 minutes of that particular resource. So at the moment, which is the, which is this one? This, this is the vitamin Lange extract. That's, that is the one that has been the problem for the longest. Uh, so yeah, we need to bring a load, we definitely need to bring a load more of that over. And the idea of this is because a lot of the time you'd, you'd find that a train would come in and would, it would grab a load of this and then we'd see a bit of a problem. But then the spaceship would come in a bit later and it would fill it back up again. So it's kind of hard to tell whether it was really a problem or not, especially if it was sort of wibbling around somewhere in the middle. Now, in theory, you, you, you always want to keep it at basically 100% and you have a load of extra in the three warehouses next to the spaceship where it could have just been unloaded to. But you can't always get that. And so it's, it's, oh, there's, there's, this is dropping quickly. The uh, Vitalic Reagent is plummeting. Look at that. Uh, I wonder if it's going to go all the way down. Uh, yes, that's now dropped into the red and, in fact, all gone. It's, it's clearly a train has pulled in, picked up a huge amount of the uh, the Vitalic reagent, and it's just slurped up everything and is now going to take it off to be made into modules or, or science or something like that. And so now we get up here, we have a light, a light has appeared, and in five minutes another one, and then so on and so on and so on. And it, so, yeah, the idea of this is it just gives us an idea of how long that particular thing has been a problem for. And so this works essentially with a memory cell that's being a counter over here. We've got, uh, we're watching all the numbers com coming up here, setting the colours, and then up here we are looking to see if the th current amount we have is greater than the threshold, then we'll output a reset, which will reset the uh, the counter up here. Otherwise we, otherwise we don't. That's then passed up here, it goes into the counter. If there is enough, then we'll get a 1 coming through here. That is not equal to 0, so therefore we won't pass through the output, the, uh, the C background to the output. If, however, there is insufficient, then we'll see a 0 coming through here, and so the C will be passed through. And there is an ad one additional C coming through from the, all the these um, uh, combinators along here that gets passed as, as, as I say that gets passed into this counter and so the ca and so the counter is counting up and over here you can see we've got to 64,000 uh, ticks at this point and then along here we're uh, we're looking to see um, well we're sending a red light through uh, to make make it light up in red and then we're watching to see if C is greater than D on all of these because that means we've got a D signal coming in from over here and that means we can pass the D signals through for each level along here so they don't have to be set individually on every single light meaning that if we decide we want to change our threshold so maybe if these bars filled up, we'd say, oh, okay, we'd better make it 10 minutes instead of what, five minutes then per light, because we've clearly been out of that thing for so long. And so that, at that point, it's really, really easy to change the thresholds. All you have to do is come over here, change E from being 10,000 to being, well, something else. And then those are the paths through all the way through up here. So you're adding, taking D, adding on the E, and then outputting it as a D. So here we're outputting 10,000, here we're outputting 20,000, and 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, all the way up. So it's increasing by, by 10,000 each time. 10,000 ticks is apparently 2.8 minutes roughly which is, so I think that the idea is that's that's about five minutes given that we're running at 35 UPS so these are real world five minutes is rather than in game five minutes is which is a subtly different and um, a slightly interesting way of putting it together but never mind it doesn't doesn't matter as I said if we wanted to change it to, to, to in game five minutes it'd be trivial to come in here and just set, set the uh, numbers on the on this combinator for, for the e signal because it's just being added up all the way up here and anyway, so the, yeah, the point of this is that we can then see which of our uh, resources are running low and how long they've been running low for, therefore how much we need to worry about it, and then come in and try and sort them out. And I am a bit worried about the, uh, no, the Vulcanite, we now have a bit more, a uh, spaceship's clearly come in. I was going to say, I am a bit worried about the Vulcanite because I thought I um, was making enough of it, but it seems that we are either filling up buffers or actually we are still using the Vulcanite a bit faster than I thought we were. And over the last hour, well, we're seeing spikes in production, so that means we, we could run this system faster if we just turned, if we just had the whole system running all the time. We're seeing quite a lot of bounce in the in the consumption as well, but we are producing it 50% faster than we're consuming it. So I think this is a, this is just a case of filling up buffers. The Vulcanite production is is does seem to be absolutely fine after the upgrades I put in there, and so I'm pretty confident that we will see we'll come back next week or maybe the week after and see that this bar is basically full. And looking up here, you can see that the red lights are warning and, and, and long-term problems have all gone off up here. So I think that's all probably okay. 
And Tristan's been doing many other little fixes here and there. So the advanced solar panel production over here had failed again, apparently because the belt from the station that's bringing in the electronic components had been cut off because we were trying to use up everything down, all the resources down here first. And now we've got to a point where there is no lithium left, so this has stopped, and so we need to, we need to bring them in by train. And we are bringing them in by train, but the, but the belt needs to be relinked back in again because it had been it, it, presumably the belt had been cut off like like that or something uh, to to allow us to use them from over here rather than putting in a prior splitter which is a little bit silly but oh well what can you do the train that brings the elevator cable over to the secondary elevator have ran out of fuel somehow that's a bit of a mystery because whilst it's not being fueled up over here it is supposed to be fueled up over the other end that's down in here down here no it's not being fu fueled up over here so this is probably why it ran out it must have been running from here to the other station and, and, and not filling up is it just doing those two stations oh no there's a short train refueling station as well so maybe Tristan's added that in or maybe there was a problem with short train refueling I I wouldn't like to say but there is there is a station down here is this this one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, short train refueling where it can pull in, it can have more fuel put into it, and then it can go off. So it's a bit odd. It shouldn't have had any problems, but um, apparently it had. So Tristan managed to get some more fuel out to it. It's now running again. I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on it and see if it becomes a problem again. We had a methane jam, or rather we had a train trying to come up through the space elevator with methane ice in it. It got to the top of the space elevator and then couldn't go anywhere because the, the methane ice station up in biological science, which is this one, um, had a train limit set on it. So it got to the top of the elevator and went, oh, I haven't got anywhere to go. And so it just stopped there. So in order to prevent that happening again, we now have a, a fixed train limit of one on the, st on the station up here. So the train can always just come up and snuggle itself into this station, sorry, this station, whenever it wants. And, we, and it won't get to the top of the elevator and go, well, I'm confused. So this should work much better now. I'm slightly surprised there isn't a train parked here. Maybe there's a bit of a shortage of methane ice down on Norvis. That's not too much of a problem though because um, we seem to have a decent amount up here and we're not really getting through it very, very quickly. It's possible this is my fault because I started using the methane ice up here again and then so I might have called for the train or set up a train or something. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But it, but the, uh, the system is set up prop quite nicely. So once we found the source of the problem, which was that methane ice train and it was given a, a pr the appropriate kick and sent off over to, to uh, go and park in the station, all the trains that were stuck down here at the bottom jamming up this rail just poured through the elevator because there's no cross traffic here so you don't have to worry about jams and particular trains getting in the way as soon as you as soon as the, we freed up the elevator the trains going in as fast as they possibly could and we're getting a, a very nice throughput through there and everything seemed to it suddenly started working very very nicely and as as we expect it to He's also put in a new core mine down here because, in his words, why not? We might as well have another one. Uh, he said he hadn't seen it working yet because the power poles were still being built by the bots when he uh, when, when the stream ended. But they've now clearly, in the time I've been making this video or possibly other videos, <laughs> they have now been put in. We have a uh, we have another core mine working quite nicely down here. Um, Yes, it's working. It's gradually filling up the station over here. Eventually, there'll be enough in here that a train will uh, deign to come over and, uh, and, and investigate what's going on. And it'll, and it'll pick it up and take it back over to the core processing area as you're used to. And seeing up here, we seem to have quite a lot of core chunks available at the moment. Um, but we don't have a station for this one to go to. So mm, the system is ticking over more or less as it normally does. Oh, and there it goes now. There's another, there is a mine available somewhere that's got enough uh, core chunks for it to take. And so this one can pull in and start emptying. And yeah, and we you'll notice there's been no interruption in the supply over here. So we we appear to have a functioning logistics system here. It's, it's all working quite nicely, and we're uh, yeah just moving all of the core chunks around as we, as we need them. Oh, and there's another two trains worth parked down here as well, so plenty of supply available. He also made sure the modules for the heat shield production were sent down here. So we've now got tier sixes in all of these machines. So we'll get it, well, except that one. So we'll get a bit more heat shield out for all the resources we put in. And having those in there is good because we're using iridium. And iridium is fairly expensive. Well, I think Mike has solved the problems of the uh, the iridium production, as we saw on the graph. There is not a shortage of iridium at the moment. Uh, but even so, it is still expensive. And so being able to get that... 56% productivity boost by using the advanced assembly machines and the tier 6 uh, productivity modules is very worth having. And then as you can see it's just feeding it out up here to the station and we now have loads and loads of, um, of heat shield tiles available which is fantastic because we get through them at quite a rate at least, or at least we sometimes do. Things have calmed down a little bit recently because we've stopped making quite so much scaffolding because we've pretty much got to the end of going out and trying to build all the dimensional anchors and that was what was taking thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, pieces of scaffolding every time we went out to set, set one up. So having the, uh, that reduction that massive drop off in the amount of heat shield we're getting through may mean that this new system over here was not actually necessary or rather should have been built 20 hours earlier. However, it, it, it's good to have a healthy supply of heat shield tiles. We'll probably find something to use them all for. 
There have been some power problems over on Njord, so Tristan has also put in some more power generation over here. Uh, can we t can we tell from the graph? Well, we can see we can see the amount of power production pr being produced going up. We can see the amount being consumed going up as well. Uh, I don't have a good t I don't have a total for the, for the amount of power being produced and consumed, but given the way it's been ramping up, I I'm not surprised he's needed to put in some extra extra solar panels. As you can see, we're now using between six and mm, I've seen that flicking up to eight, I think, just about. Uh, but we're producing nine, so things are going pretty well here. We seem we seem to be all right. Um, it's yeah okay it's wibbling around up to maybe seven and a half at the most uh, and we seem to be quite capable of uh, keep, keeping up with that over here so that's that's going well it's also 1.3 gigajoules of accumulator so if we do get crazy little wild spikes that don't that don't last then the accumulators will be able to smooth those off for us so that's that's going to be pretty good maybe i should put some accumulators over in talos as well it makes it a bit easier to tell when there's been any problems anyway because if we look at the um, accumulators yes you can see there were problems nine minutes ago but since then it's been uh, it's been it's been okay now i suspect that me that has been since the last stream because i'm pretty sure i've been talking for more than nine minutes or more than 18 minutes rather um, so we might still need even more solar out here but it is it, it is manageable it's something that can be done uh, without too much difficulty especially as there's now so much slack in the production because we've stopped making the dimensional anchors. Over in Cathorbit, uh, Mike has fixed the problem we had last week with the, uh, with the with the cables blocking up the belts along here. He's fixed that by putting in these extra boxes over here, so there's a bit more storage space, and he's also reduced the amount that he's asking for. So if I can find the combinator, here's the combinator. He's now only asking for 200 at a time, and with how often this spaceship goes back and forth, that should be absolutely fine. Now at the moment, he's got a little bit more than that. At the moment, he's got three and a half thousand of them, so you know he might have gone from one extreme to the other. But I think this should probably be okay, uh, as long as, he's, as as long as they keep trickling over in a sort of couple of hundreds, and there's room in these boxes to hide them, and there's plenty plenty of room in them now that now we've got the extra storage space up here. Then I think this should be absolutely okay, and uh, the system should keep running. And that is probably why we have a healthy supply of um, iridium at the moment. Oh, and here comes the train. No, this is, this is the train coming to get some mineral water, which is uh, less exciting. During the last stream, I did a little bit of testing because I discovered a bit of it. There's, there's a problem I'd found where um, if you select something in, in, in the game by pressing Q because you want to put down another belt, for example, but you know, you, but you already know before you pick it up that you don't want the belt to be going in the same direction. So you press R to rotate it. If you do that too quickly, then the game doesn't realise that you're trying to rotate the thing you've picked up because you haven't picked it up yet, and so it rotates the belt underneath. Now, I thought that was a sort of a ping-related problem, so it was a thing that would only occur during multiplayer because I didn't remember having seen it in the past. Uh, however, after doing a bit of testing, we discovered it's actually a NavSat-related thing. So I'm in the navigation satellite at the moment. If I come over here and I say, I want, to, I want to grab this piece of belt here and I want to rotate it, so I'll press Q and R in very quick succession, then that's interesting. This is not, not failing in the way that I've seen it fail before. So maybe it is a multiplayer thing. So maybe there is something to do with the lag between myself and the uh, and the server which is interesting because Tristan tried it and he's playing on the server uh, and he didn't have any problems so if I test it down again down here this is this is me not in the navsat mode at the moment if I select this belt here and try and rotate it you see that works and that's what we were expecting in even in multiplayer that was absolutely fine if I switch over to navsat mode then it's still working. So it does seem to still be related somehow to being in multiplayer. So I think some further testing may be required here, and I shall maybe report back next week if we manage to come to any uh, any decent conclusions from this. I also managed to get smacked in the face by a uh, logistics bot while I was standing around in Norbit, because I was over here uh, with my spaceship, collecting a load of um, stuff to go off and do some, do some builds, as you do. Uh, and Mike had just got back from one of his exp expeditions out to set up a, another dimensional anchor, and he'd parked the ship here, and he hadn't de deprogrammed all of these blue chests on it. So he's having an absolute bot frenzy, bringing over all of the uh, scaffolding and all of the solar panels he was going to need to go out and set up the next dimensional anchor, which he, strictly speaking, didn't need, because there were a load of boxes up here that or had already already claimed all of that stuff but we'll, uh, we'll we'll gloss over that a little bit because it's easy enough to forget something like that and so there was hordes and hordes of logistics bots flying from down here where the uh, scaffolding is made over my spaceship over all the spaceships to go up to this this one up here and because bots sometimes fall out of the sky well I actually managed to get hit by one and it did a certain amount of damage to me which was um <laughs> a little bit ridiculous but uh, oh well the, these things happen I guess and so now I guess we get on to the uh, the researches we've done. And well, the mining productivity 13 is it, 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 it's still underway. We're still struggling with it. As you can see, we've got from about sort of the 15% we were on before to about 65%. So we've made some good progress. But once again, we've run out of science packs uh, down, 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 down here. And it's the advanced science pack ones that we were talking about before. And I think we reckon that was down to the uh, lack of one of the other data cards, not the upvote data, one of the other ones, due to a lack of quantum processors, due to probably the lack 
lack of holmium that we've been seeing. So that one's on Tristan to fix at the moment. We need to get a good good supply of holmium coming in. Once we've got that, we can perhaps build up that quantum processor town I've been talking about for a while. Or maybe we'll just see if the system we've got already in the energy science area is going to be fast enough all by itself uh, once it's got all the inputs it needs. But there's going to be a bit, of, yeah, there's going to need to be a bit of fiddling and faffing there. Uh, but once we have, hopefully we'll get these uh, advanced science packs up and running again. And that brings us to the end of the video. Because there's only three of us playing in the last stream, there's not been quite as much stuff done as sometimes as sometimes there would be. Uh, Mark has been off being uh, gallivanting around, doing uh, doing goodness knows what, doing Mark things, um, and so he's not been he wasn't with us. So that meant a little bit less progress was made because there was only th only the three of us. Still, I think we did reasonably well and, uh, nonetheless. And I believe on Monday he will be back joining us again. So we'll be back up to the full complement of four players. So uh, please come along to see the stream then at 7.30pm UK time as usual. We'll be carrying on. So I've got a, a reasonable, reasonably chunky to-do list once again this this week. So we'll uh, see how much of that I can get through. Getting the science up and running again nicely I think is pretty pretty high on the list. So there's a, yeah, there's a few a few emergency fixes needed. And then just hopefully getting a lot more hold me a minute. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Then I'll be back on Wednesday for the satisfactory stream. I'm actually going to be doing one this week because show week is now over once again. So I think everything can return to normal. I'll, um, I should be carrying on expanding the factory, trying to make things like turbo motors a bit faster because they're going to be used by lots and lots of other things. So I should be spending lots of time lamenting the lack of a good copy paste in Satisfactory. Uh, but never mind, it's good fun anyway and, uh, and building things up and is, uh, is, is still enjoyable. So I'm not too upset about that as long as I don't have to do too much stuff with the rails. Then at the weekend we'll be back for some more of these catch-up videos, uh, Friday, Saturday and probably Sunday because of the, way, the amount I talk. So uh, please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of the content on the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.